Hi everyone, welcome to the next trading topic, mean reversion. This is quite an important topic as you see that it's one of the major system types that all traders need to know. So let's get into it. Here's a quick overview of what I will be addressing in this presentation. We start off by going into the theory of what mean reversion is, we discuss some ideas around it, and finally we apply it by looking at the results of a mean reversion system. The system this time applies to the S&P and it's an end of day system. Most systems come down to it's either trending or counter trending. We either go with the flow or against it. Mean reversion discusses more the idea of the counter trending side. George Soros has been punting this idea for years, having practically built his empire on this trading strategy. It's ironic how all traders agree with the statement, the trend is your friend, yet some of the greats have made most of their money going against the trend. Soros refers to it as reflexivity, and he found it's not just simply in the flow of the market, but also in other economics or fundamentals like PE ratios or GDP growth and so on. What Soros promotes is the idea that if something has stretched too far like a rubber band, then eventually this indicator will revert back to its average or mean, hence the name mean reversion. So if prices move too high away from its mean, it snaps back down. But also if it stretches too low, then eventually it rises back to its mean as well. Some other big names that have come across this phenomena is Sir Francis Galton and Warren Buffett, amongst many others. Buffett can almost be said to be a counter-trend trader with his famous philosophy of buy when others are selling and sell when others are buying. So mean reversion is the movement back to an indicator's average. Let's take a look at an example to help clarify this idea. Here's the chart from 2009 to 2015 of the South African index. The green line is the index itself and the pink line is the price to earnings ratio or PE ratio. Having done some research, it's known that the PE ratio of the Aussie tends to average around 14 to 15. 14.5 to be exact. This was found using data going way back. Applying it to the market, we see it hold true over this testing period. Albeit not an easy ride, we can see that the PE ratio did oscillate between the 14 line. Sometimes it went too high, other times it went too low. So we can see this natural ups and downs do exist. So have you ever used the mean reversion method? Chances are you have. As most new traders start by learning about the RSI or stochastics indicator, these indicators are often used with comments like we are now overbought or oversold. This implies a change in the trend. If stochastics is above 80, then you'll find that most traders won't go long, or below 20 they won't go short. In fact, they would prefer to do the opposite. So a share is rallying and rallying, and the stocks now say it's above 80, some traders will either close their longs or others might even open the shorts. But I think you get the idea now. Most systems are either going with the trend or against it. Mean reversion plays on the idea of going against the trend. So when does mean reversion not work? Quite simply, if it's a counter-trending system, it means it won't work in a trending environment. Similarly, in a sideways market, trending systems suffer the most. No system works in every market. If you believe it does, you'll probably also believe that there's one pickup line for all women. Been there, tried that, got beer spilled all over the t-shirt several times. So a quick last thought on trends and counter trends. The word trend sounds so simple, and if anyone mentions it, we all seem to nod our heads in agreement on what it is. But have you stopped to really think how to define a trend? As simple as the concept seems, it's actually very difficult to put it down as one universal definition. The most common definition is probably new highs or new lows, but that's only one definition. 
Did the trend really only start at the breakout or did it start with the moving averages? Did it start when there were no highs or lows or when the rate of change slowed down? Identifying the middle bit of a trend is simple enough for everyone, but where it started and stopped is very different. Anyways, it's just something to mull over on those long nights when the missus has kicked you out and you're lying on the couch and have nothing better to do. So common mean reversion indicators that traders use are the stochastics, RSI, Bollinger Bands, and then there's the less common percentage move away from a band. For example, if we're 10% higher than the 200 day moving average, close your longs. Just using these ideas you can create a vast array of systems already. You basically just need to find an average for something that seems to consistently happen and then try and develop a system around that. Like the 50 and 200 day moving average seems to be a commonly watched moving average. So how far do we move away from it? How often does it return to the mean afterwards? Now for the practical side where we look at a system. Here's what I call the swing 5 system. The reason it's called that is because it's a swing trading system that works around the 5 simple moving average. This system was developed by Kevin Davey and used as an example in one of his YouTube movies. The whole video was an hour and a half long but it was definitely worth the watch. He released a book in 2014 called Building Winning Algorithmic Trading Systems if you want to read more about his processes. So the rules are very simply. If there's a close below the 5 simple moving average, then go long at the next day. And then finally, you exit after 5 days. So there's no stop loss and there's no target. You just buy if there's a close below the 5 SMA and exit 5 days later. The system is on a daily chart. The difference between the trend followers and the counter trenders in this example is that the trend followers would more likely sell on a bearish close where the counter trenders are buying. The one restriction to the system is that if you are already in a position you can't open a new one. So let's have a look at, uh, at an example of how the system works. On this chart the blue line is the 5 SMA. So here you can see that there was a red candle which was a close below the 5 SMA. Here's the green arrow sorry, here's the green arrow that shows we went long at the next day and finally up here is a candle that shows that we closed after 5 days. So a close below the 5 SMA, long at the open of the next day and then 5 days later we sell. This chart only shows the longs to help illustrate the example more easily. Having backtested this in Ami Broker, here we have the results since 2006. The longs made 1,300 points and the shorts only 4 points, so shorts were pretty much a waste of time on the dailies. The win ratio was 60% of the time, which is something that's quite common with mean reversion systems is that they tend to have a higher win ratio than trending systems. And the average per trade was 4 points per trade. The high win ratio really stood out for me on the system which is quite nice. But as I said it's very much in line with expectation. The results are mediocre at best on this system with these specific rules and the, de the developer himself points that out. But the system is really there to demonstrate an idea more than anything else. Kevin Davey does hint that with a few filters added to it, it can be a very good system that he himself trades. What's more common with mean reversion systems is that you tend to have higher win ratios like 60% or so in this case and with, count, with trending systems you tend to only see about 30 to 40% win ratios. However, when the trending systems work, they tend to be more profitable, whereas 
your counter trending tend to have smaller wins. Whenever I see uh, very high win ratios and very big wins, it's always an instant flag for me. Something that says stay away. Going through some further analysis, we see that the average winner is about 25 points. The biggest winner is 93 points, which would have equated to $4,650 $4, win on that trade with this broker. You can also see that it's only had really one bad year, 2008 to be specific. Here's a screenshot of the results using TradeStation, which um, the developer uses. The results are very similar to that what I got on Ami Broker. However, there is a slight difference as my testing was not done on the same data as TradeStations. The data is similar, but it's not the exact same. But you can see overall it's similar results. The system would have resulted in 67,000 over here you can see with on the longs over the same period between uh, March and March 2006 and August 2015. After costs, it's around 45,000, which it says over here, with the longs only, and it also has a win ratio of 65%, which is similar to our 60%. Without the exact breakdown of the trades, it's hard to say exactly where the differences would be. But it does show you the importance of running a system on the data that you're testing with and how different data sources can actually play around with your results quite significantly. Here is the code for Ami Broker if you wanted to play around with the system. The code would be made available on the website if you wanted to play around a bit later. The conclusion on the system is it's obviously not a great system. It needs further enhancements which is stated by Kevin Davy himself, who trades an improved version of it. The focus on this system would be to test further on the exit side, both the exit on a profit and the exit on a loss. So the exit on a loss could include maybe an average true range stop loss or a slowing moving average, a slower moving average as a stop loss. And then the exit on the profit side could include a technique to rather let it run until it's stopped out or well there's a host of ideas I'm sure. Other parameters could also be played around with like using the 10 moving average instead of the 5. Ending as usual with a final thought, I want to ask the question do you really understand the difference between causation and correlation? If something is highly correlated, it means it moves together. But just because it moves in the same direction for a time, doesn't mean it's caused by the same force. One interesting statistic is the Sports Illustrated Indicator, which states that every time an American model is on the magazine cover, then the S&P returns double digits that year. Now do we really believe that all the fund managers out there stare at the latest magazine covers? Well, maybe they do, but it's not for investing purposes. Sometimes there are just weird coincidences out there. Just make sure you follow the patterns for the right reasons, and not because there's some weird coincidence going on. So on that note, guess it's time to trade the Halloween indicator. That's all for the presentation. Here's some last reading material, uh, some sources that helped me develop this presentation. But good luck with the trading and hope you enjoyed the presentation. Thank you very much. Cheers.